And welcome back, Steve Malzberg Show, Wednesday edition. And joining us right now is the author of uh, the, the column that everybody reads in the Washington Post. It's the Fact Checker uh, column or blog, however you want to describe it. And uh, its author, Glenn Kessler, is with us once again. Hey, Glenn. Glad to be with you. Good. Good to talk to you again. Merry Christmas to you. And um, you uh, have now uh, penned the biggest Pinocchios of 2013. And uh, let me play uh, for everybody uh, several versions of the number one Pinocchio as, uh, as determined by you. Here it is. If you've got health care already, then you can keep your plan if you are satisfied with it. If you like the plan you have, you can keep it. I intend to keep this promise. If you like your health care plan, you'll be able to keep your health care plan. You all right. So and th th some of those, to be fair, were in 09 and 08, but, uh, we, you know, we, we could have pulled it right up. Um, so how, how did you come to the determination that uh, that was the, uh, the, biggest, uh, the biggest Pinocchio of, the, of 2013? Well, I, on several, several levels. First of all, uh, it, it was a very substantive promise that was made repeatedly uh, over the course of many years. Uh, secondly, um, the uh, the uh, impact of, or, or let me put it this way, the, the the fact that the promise could not be kept was a direct direct consequence of both a very early cutoff date for grandfathering plans, which the administration put into the law, and also then the tight regulations that the administration wrote about uh, the grandfathering rules. So um, the two things together really made it a very um, uh, bad uh, <laughs> promise to to have made in the first place, and you know, and there were warning signals at the time, and there were people that were saying this doesn't seem, you know, that it can be sustainable, and you could kind of, I mean, the the, the political reason why they made that promise was they were trying to uh, avoid the problems that the Clintons had when they tried to deal do their health care overhaul, and that was people were afraid of losing their plans, so they made this promise. Uh, for political reasons, you you can kind of see why they might do that, but at some point you kind of have to kind of readjust expectations, or say, "Gee, we've now discovered we can't really live up to this." But they never did that. How does this one rate um, with? I, I know back in um, in '04, uh, you wrote a piece, if, I, if I'm correct, about um, uh, the Bush Iraq uh, weapons of mass destructions claim. Um, how, how how does this rank with that? Is this? Would you say that this is the the, 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 based on the, the factors enumerated by you in making this decision to make it number one Pinocchio of the year, would you say that it uh, it outweighs and outranks uh, any previous uh, modern day presidents of Pinocchios? <laughs> well, you know, it's hard to to compare those things. Um, how about intent? I mean, how about intent? Well, I mean, I, I do, to me, the the equivalent of this is probably George Herbert Walker Bush's pledge never to raise taxes. Um, because there, in fact, if you remember the full quote there, it was, Congress will push, they'll pull, they'll demand, but I will say, you know, I will tell them, read my lips, no new taxes. Right. And so there was a specific thing where he said, this thing is going to happen, and I'm going to hold firm. And it, it turned out that that did happen. Congress said you got to raise taxes, and he didn't hold firm. Okay, so on, if those three were put in a barrel, and you could, you make a, the, that analogous to that one, where does the Bush one in your mind? Uh, see, I don't think that, in my opinion, it was that Bush didn't lie on purpose. Uh, Bush thought he, like the intelligence said, he was presenting the intelligence. In my opinion, but so where would the Bush one fall above those two, which are analogous in your point of view, or below them? Where would where would that rank? Well, like I said, I think it's hard to, you know, these two. The, the health care one and the, and the taxes one had to do with specific policies, domestic policies. When you get to the Iraq war, it's, it's hard to put it. It's, it's, it's of a different order or a different type of, of, of misstatement. Mm -hmm. Because, for, first of all, the, the, it wasn't just that he thought that there were weapons of mass destruction there. There was a, the broader question is whether the administration had – cooked some of the intelligence, made it look more dire than it actually was, or that they ignored contrary information or contrary analysis. And then secondly, there were, there were consequences of having to decide to launch the war, uh, you know, which you know, continue to reverberate to this day. So I would just put, I, I think you kind of, I think you need to 
say, well, these are political promises. This is a foreign policy statement. There might be other foreign policy statements you could look at um, that I, I think you you can't weigh them up and say all pro all promises are equal, Okay, if that makes sense. Fair enough. Okay, we're talking to Glenn Kessler here, the author of the Fact Checker blog in the uh, Washington Post on the Steve Malzberg Show. He has his uh, biggest Pinocchios of 2013. Number two uh, was Obama offering a, 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 an image in a news conference where about the sequester where he said that right now janitors sweeping the empty halls of the Capitol uh, are, are, are getting paid less. That was your number two uh, Pinocchio. And then number four also belonged to Obama, uh, Obama um, when at the presidential a debate, uh, I, I presume, um, if I'm not mistaken, when he said uh, uh, that he, uh, well, maybe it was after the fact, that also when he said that um, he did refer to Benghazi as an act of terror. And you and I have discussed uh, that one specifically. But let me ask you, um, if we have time, we'll get to them specifically. But has there ever been, in, in your memory, in, in your uh, Pinocchio column uh, of the year, uh, a president with three of the top four Pinocchios? Uh you know, I guess I, I guess I should go back and see what the. I think he may have had two last year. I don't can't remember. Uh, I have to go back and. See, I guess I should have a running list. But you I, don't remember offhand if uh, Clinton had four or four. Has anybody had more than three or four of the top four? One president. Well, you know, we've only been doing this for three years. Okay, so that's we can't, go, okay. can't go all the way back. Okay, there you go. Yeah, I, Bill Clinton certainly had a few uh, things that would. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I would say so. All right, folks, read it all for yourself at thewashingtonpost.com. And uh, our friend Glenn Kessler, uh, the fact checker blog, and you'll see uh, all of it for yourself, uh, the Pinocchio list for 2013. Thank you, Glenn. Appreciate you're, it. You're welcome. Take all care. Right. Glenn Kessler, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, very, very uh, interesting, uh, as they say. Now, when we come back, Roland Martin, formerly of CNN, now has his own TV show. He will join us, and we will talk about um, Santa Claus. Santa Claus, that's what they call them on The Little Rascals. Uh, Spanky's father called him Santa Claus. Anyway, is he white? Is he black? If you think he's white, are you racist? Why would a, a black child feel offended if, a, if Santa Claus looks white? We'll talk about it all right here. You're not going to want to miss it. Steve Malzberg Show. And, of course, it's presented 3 to 6 p.m. Eastern every day on Newsmax TV and radio. The 